Hey, are we ever gonna cut to this camera, by the way? <laughs> no. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times SNL made fun of reality TV. Oh, God! Oh, I just feel so grounded, so grounded. being back here. Yes. Right. Hiya, we wanted to do Big Brother, but we failed the psychiatric exam. They sure don't have one, so we pass. We're here to bring the drama. Whatever. For this list, we'll be looking at the sketches that best highlighted how truly ridiculous reality shows can be. Was there a reality show spoof that we missed? Tell us about it in the comments. Number 10. The Real Intros of Reality Hills Bravo's slate of reality programming sometimes seems like a parody in its own right. In many ways, it's a gift that keeps on giving to a show like SNL. In this sketch, they found a way to mock several of the network's signature tropes in one go. Let's face it, we barely had storylines anyway, so we cut to the chase. We get the real estate himbo, the gold digger with her aging husband, and of course several versions of the real housewives. John Mulaney also does double duty as a pair of lifestyle show twins with a recognizably snotty attitude. His booty is real, but my personality is fake. Our niece played Topanga on Boy Meets World. Jealous? Yes. What really sells this sketch is the fact that it doesn't even seem like much of a sketch. At this point, Bravo could produce this exact show and no one would notice. Number 9. Catfish like most reality shows, MTV's Catfish falls apart if you look too closely at it. So of course, SNL is there to point out all the inconsistencies, be they in the premise or the production. Hey, are we ever gonna cut to this camera, by the way? <laughs> no. AD Bryant is your typically clueless catfishing victim, falling for flimsy excuses and fake photos. Meanwhile, Adam Levine as Neve pokes fun at the host's particular quirks. Okay, now before we go in, I'd like to ask you one long rambling question that sounds insightful but goes nowhere. <laughs> Considering what you know now, how do you feel as of yesterday based on feelings you felt in addition to what has been brought to light by me, Neve, but disregarding the events of tomorrow? They also highlight a widely used editing staple in the reality genre, teasing an ambiguous climax for the sake of tension. Whoa, huh? Dang, that's who you were? I can't believe it! Is this reaction positive or negative? You can't tell! As is often the case, the confrontation isn't nearly so dramatic. But unlike most Catfish episodes, it ends with a happy couple. You can't be cynical about everything, you know? Number 8. The Fliplets HGTV has made a bank with series after series about generically amiable duos flipping houses. In this send-up of the Property Brothers, we see what can happen with a third personality in the mix. I'm Tristan, and when our parents divorced, I was the only one that went to live with our dad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they don't want to hear about that. <laughs> While two of the fliplets are happy to stick to the HGTV brand, their brother Tristan seems determined to hash out their family issues on camera. I don't think they ever fully grieved the death of our family. <laughs> Not really the platform, buddy. No. So rather than face the demons that they have, they go city to city trying to build the home they never had. Mikey Day and Alex Moffat are great as they keep trying to steer back to the upbeat script. It's Ryan Gosling who really shines through, though especially when his casual line delivery swerves into dramatic territory. And I just watched him, like it was all a little show that God was putting on just for me. <laughs> a marionette dangling before the lapping flames of his master's furnace. Really, it's the relentlessly peppy music that sells the whole thing. If HGTV ever got this off the rails, we might actually pay for a cable subscription again. Number 7. House Hunters At first, this sketch didn't actually seem like too much of a departure from another quintessential HGTV show. As Liev Schreiber and Leslie Jones discuss their housing options and need for a man cave, even phrases like half-car garage seem more like gentle teasing than parody. What is five cents over budget? Should we cross that one off the list? Yeah, I think so. The longer the bit goes on, though, the sillier it gets especially once they start throwing wordplay into conversations we've all heard a million times before. What about the Hidden Valley Ranch? The little packet? It was creamy. And it was right next door to that salad. I just don't like having neighbors that close. Sure, a toilet on the ceiling is good fun, but the best jokes go by so casually that you almost miss them. Wait, what about your man cave? There's no room. I can't have the cave, I'll just keep the man in the basement. Mm. <laughs> 
In the end, our couple gets their dream vampire infested house. It might not have a man cave, but the basement looks like it's working out just fine. Can you let me out? <laughs> Number six, E! New Lineup. SNL's not wrong when they point out that E! News hasn't always lived up to its name in the traditional sense. Wait, which one am I? Alexa, you are Kendall Jenner. What? Not everything can be the news. Instead, they give us a rundown of new programming from the channel that would actually fit in pretty well with their existing shows. The centerpiece of all this? Another Kardashian spin-off, of course. Gal Gadot appears as Kendall Jenner in a series that mainly features the reality star trying to navigate her own gigantic home. Is this the bathroom? Damn, closet again. Other highlights include Leslie Jones with a show that, to be honest, we would probably watch. I was on Bravo, now I'm on E. I'm everywhere, bitch. <laughs> I hate that. Meanie Leaks is I hate that. We've got to hand it to SNL. They have a pretty firm grip on what makes the E network tick. Number five, Bland Man. Blake Shelton's farm hunk skit was a fun opportunity for the ladies of SNL to poke fun at shows like The Bachelor. So much so that they decided to do it all over the next season with an even blander man. My name is Dan, and I'm from Chicago or Denver or something. I have blue eyes, brown hair, and gray shirt. Once again, a rotating cast of hopefuls jockey to get FaceTime with the pleasantly generic Bachelor character. From the repeated tag-in phrase, can I steal him for a sec? To the attention-getting tactics of the contestants, no cliché goes untouched. The bit takes aim squarely at the manufactured intimacy of most network dating shows. But the moon's nice. Yeah, but I also like the day, you know, with the sun. Yeah, the sun is so nice. <laughs> we have so much in common. It also doesn't hold back from addressing the representation issues these series usually have. I'm the black one. <laughs> Let me walk you out. Wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't tell you yet that um, everyone I ever met is dead. Oh, you have a sad past. Then you can stay one more week. It makes you wish Selena Gomez could always swoop in and cut a season short. Number four, Floribama Shore. MTV's Gulf Coast follow-up to Jersey Shore is the kind of thing that seems spoof-proof, but SNL still took a swing. It's elevated by the addition of host Saoirse Ronan. Better known for dramatic roles, it's fun to see the actress fully embrace her reality-ready character here. My mama didn't raise me to be afraid of no storm. She raised me to be a fearless Christian sex addict with gum diseases you ain't even heard of, player. This entire sketch falls into the category of things that are funny because they're true. We've all seen a dozen versions of these people, from the party obsession to the arguments to the freewheeling hookups. But I'm not worried, y'all, because Trish said that she banged me. After Kyler. However, we have to love the hurricane through line. Anybody who's ever experienced storm season in the South knows those people who still insist the beach is the best place to be. Wait a minute, there's a hurricane coming? We need to go, y'all. We're with you, Justin. Number three, the Great British Bake Off. The sweet British import is known for its refreshing lack of typical reality show drama, and SNL decided it was time to do something about that. Emily Blunt and Cecily Strong feature in this as Brielle and Paisley, who have only landed in the tent as a last resort. Hiya, we wanted to do Big Brother, but we failed the psychiatric exam. They sure don't have one, so we pass. We're here to bring the drama. These two are kind of like a cruder Statler and Waldorf. As the rest of the cast tries to carry out business as usual, they're determined to drag the show down into the reality TV mud. They don't hold back with their TMI confessionals or with their attempts at sabotage. Paisley, you clearly punched Liam's cake. No, she didn't. He punched his own cake. Check the tape. Yeah, he's a psycho. He choked me earlier. He took uh, his hand like this and he choked me. Until they find out there's no prize money, that is. Oh well, there's always the extreme baking championship. Number two, Disney Housewives. SNL has devoted plenty of time to skewering the Real Housewives franchise, but this angle was definitely the best one they ever tried. Happily Ever After apparently wasn't such smooth sailing for these princesses. Jasmine and Aladdin are broke. They used up all their wishes. As they mingle at Rapunzel's dinner party, the SNL ladies absolutely own their physical performances, clearly loving the chance to act out the kind of overdramatic pettiness that only exists on reality TV. Something about the Disney characters puts it over the top, though. Who does your hair? Birds? At least I didn't marry a beast. His name is Kelsey Grammer. 
Maybe it's just funny to think that even an animated princess can be a little bit of a mess. Whether they're having tawdry affairs or putting out one really cringe-worthy single. We raise our glasses to you, ladies. Whatever. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Reality stars. Even Cecily Strong and Will Ferrell struggle to keep a straight face. The House with Chris Hemsworth. When dinner plans go stone cold serious. I admire that you told me the truth, but you said that you wanted to get groceries, and then you changed your mind. I'm not sure I can trust you. Date or diss. For anyone who remembers shows like Next, this bit is spot on. My Nana and Poopy have been married for 65 years. What do you think will help us go the distance? Play your cards right, you'll get a big bowl of strange. Everybody calls me Piggy Bank because I eat all my change. Long Island Medium. Daniel Craig is uncanny as Larry Caputo. Last week we went out for this nice picnic. Just the four of us, her and me, our daughter. And this little guy. And of course, Teresa, she can't help herself. I'm seeing nuts. Whose father loved nuts? Anybody? Was it you? Chopped. Emma Thompson can drag our cooking any day. I just wish she had transformed the candy cigarette because she just stuck it in the ice cream. Yeah, along with some real cigarettes. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Star Wars Undercover Boss There are probably people who would argue that this sketch is more entertaining than any of the Star Wars sequel movies. Adam Driver steps back into his Kylo Ren blacks and then into a disguise to go undercover on Starkiller Base. You get so caught up in restoring the galaxy to its rightful state that you miss what's going on behind the scenes. I'm looking forward to having some real talk with some real folks. Except it's pretty clear that the working conditions aren't what he's really concerned about. You guys like working here? You know, work is work. Yeah, totally. What do you guys think of Kylo Ren? Adam Driver's earnest performance kills here. Between his awkward attempts to fit in with the crew and lack of emotional control, it honestly feels like it could be a canon glimpse of the character we met in Episode 7. His inability to read a room is pretty on track, too. I have a bombshell announcement to make, guys. I'm not Matt. I'm, I'm Kylo, Kylo Ren. Ren. You're Kylo Ren. You're Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren. I knew when you threw me through the soda machine. I knew from, hi, I'm Matt. What can we say? We love a good crossover, and SNL nailed it. I had a blast today. I really learned a lot. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.